Hello everyone, today we are going to be talking about my most anticipated TV show of 2021 and that is Shadow and Bone. The series that is based on the books Shadow and Bone and Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo. I'm a huge fan of both of these books and I cannot wait to the show. <laughs> Will we finally get a good young adult book to TV show adaption? Let's dive into it. We know that the show comes out on April 23rd and I am convinced that the only thing we do not yet have right now is a full-on trailer, but I think that everything else that they wanted to share with the public, they've already shared. So today I wanna go over all the things that we know so far about Shadow and Bone from the production to the cast, to the music, to the teasers, to like the set photos that came out a few days ago everything. Also before we begin I just wanted to show you the earrings that I chose out for this video. I have my little Six of Crows book that my housemate made for me and then for Shadow and Bone I chose this little sun for the sun summoner. Let's dive into it. I have timestamps in the description so you can see all the little subjects that we are going to be discussing. In a world cleaved in two by a massive barrier of perpetual darkness where unnatural creatures feast on human flesh, a young soldier uncovers a power that might finally unite her country. But as she struggles to hone her power, dangerous forces plot against her. Thugs, thieves, assassins, and saints are at war now, and it will take more than magic to survive. So we know that Shadow and Bone is going to be eight episodes for the first season and that is going to come out the 23rd of April on Netflix. But why Netflix? So this is definitely not the first time that any production company has tried to put Shadow and Bone on the big screen. But Lee Bardugo has said no to many of these options. On the NYCC Metaverse panel, she explains that most of them focus too much on turning it really into a franchise or she really felt like some of the people hadn't even read the book. Like we kept taking meetings and I kept being like, nah, Nah, like I came out of them with a bad feeling. And then we took this meeting with uh, Brian and Matt from Netflix. And, you know, I remember Matt sitting there and talking about how important it was to tell the stories of young people honestly. And I was like, okay, <laughs> like now we're talking about story. Like now I'm hooked in. And then when you and I sat down and you were like, let me tell you about what I want to do, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and we really were on the same page in terms of, inclusion in terms of the way we wanted to staff the room in terms of what mattered to us in the story so that meant a lot to me and that's when she knew that this is the person that she wanted to give the series to i'm always a bit skeptical when we hear that netflix is going to adapt something because netflix is very unpredictable they give us things like fate the wing saga and riverdale but then also like the queen's gambit so there's a lot of um variance in the quality of Netflix show. So uh, let's take a look at who is actually behind the Shadow and Bone show. So the main creator and executive producer and writer is Eric Heisner. He's adapted a screenplay before and not just any screenplay. We know him because he wrote the screenplay for the award-winning movie Arrival. Please, please, for once, can we get a Netflix teen show that's not full of exposition in the dialogue? <laughs> Other than that, Eric Heisner is mostly known for writing horror movies. So he has written The Nightmare on Elm Street, the 2010 remake, Final Destination 5, The Thing, the 2011 prequel film, Lights Out, and Bird Box. So I'm actually interested, like, does this mean we're gonna get like a darker version of Shadow and Bone? I actually think it's a pretty interesting choice and a good choice because although Shadow and Bone is not scary in the book, I do think there's a lot of potential for some more darkness on the screen with the Volcra that live in the Shadowfold. So I think it's a pretty great choice to have a horror writer on this. And the other main executive producer is Sean Levy, who we know from Night at the Museum and Stranger Things. Shadow and Bone is also created by the same production company that brought us Stranger Things, which is 21 Laps Entertainment. But on the other hand, we also know 21 Laps Entertainment and Sean Levy from another YA adaption, and that is The Darkest Minds, which flopped so bad that I didn't even know it existed until I started researching this video. 
But of course, producers and writers are not everything. Let's take a quick look at the directors. Like many TV shows, they have multiple directors that direct a few episodes. The first two episodes are directed by Lee Krieger, who has also done Riverdale. We're just gonna, we're just gonna look past that one. Then we have Dan Liu, who has also directed for The Walking Dead. Merci Almas, who is known for Outlander and Jessica Jones. And then Jeremy Webb, who also did The Umbrella Academy. And Downton Abbey. So I think that's very promising. <laughs> And something that I think is important to note is that Lee Bardugo is also an executive producer. I know that she doesn't really have that much power over what is happening, but it just gives me some, some rest in my heart to know that Lee Bardugo has also been involved in the creation of this show and that it at least has her stamp of approval. So we know that we can get Lee Bardugo's vision on the screen. But what is? Lee Bardugo's vision for the show. Let's get on to the next subject, which is the content. Like, what's gonna be in this show? But the content is kind of interesting um, because this is what Lee Bardugo has to say about the show. The show will be radically different from the books, but in the most amazing way, will be pretty much a high budget fan fiction. I hope it's a Dark Lena fan fiction. So we know that the show is going to be very different from the books, but how is it going to be different? So one thing we know is that the show is not just going to cover the book Shadow and Bone, but it's going to incorporate Six of Crows. So Shadow and Bone is the story of Alina and takes place in the Russia-inspired Ravka, and Six of Crows follows Kaz Brecker and his crew and takes place in a fantasy version of Amsterdam. And this is interesting because in the books, Six of Crows actually takes place years after Shadow and Bone, so they have to change things around in order to get the characters together in the show, because we will actually see the characters from Six of Crows and Shadow and Bone meeting in the show, which is a thing that never happens in the books. Here's what producer Eric Heisner has to say about it. The books are all set chronologically, so we technically don't get to events in the Six of Crows books until after the Shadow and Bone books have ended. So what Lee Bardugo and I had to do was essentially invent prequel stories for the key Six of Crows characters this season, Kez, Inej and Jesper, to fit alongside what is happening in the Shadow and Bone storyline. That's been the heavy lifting. So this seems to imply to me that we are not getting the original Six of Crows story in the show in this season, but that they're kind of creating like a prequel story for it. I'm excited about it. It just means extra content. That's how I see it. <laughs> this is what Lee Bardugo says about it. We've taken the stories of Shadow and Bone and the characters of Six of Crows, and we've brought them together in what I think will be a really unexpected way. Eric and our writer's room and our directors have built something entirely new that still somehow stays true to the characters and the heart of the stories. I, I have faith in this. I do have faith in this. So when we are going to watch the show, I think it's good to not go into it expecting a direct replica of the books. So we don't know a lot about the episodes yet, but we do know the episode titles and we can get some information from that. These are the episode titles. A Searing Burst of Light, We're All Someone's Monster. This is a direct quote from the Six of Crows trilogy and it's said by Matthias to Nina, but we actually know that Matthias and Nina are not going to be playing in episode two. So I don't actually know what they're going to do with this. Let me know what you guys think. The Making at the Heart of the World, Otkazatcha. This is the word in the Grisha trilogy that means the abandoned, and it's the word the Grisha use to talk about non Grisha people. Show me who you are. The heart is an arrow. This is also from a famous line from the book said by Inej, who said, The heart is an arrow, it demands aim to lend true. And the last two episodes, The Unsee and No Mourners. Episode 7 seems to be Lee Bardugo's favorite, she says about it. Episode 7 was the one for me that was like, like, it was, it was so purely what I had in my head and in my heart that it was pretty extraordinary to see it. Moving on to the cast and the characters that will be appearing in this show. Since this book is going to be a mishmash of Shadow and Burn, of Six of Crows, who are we going to see? Like, which characters are going to be in the show and which won't be in there? And who are going to be the main characters? Okay, so I'm just going to quickly name all the actors for the main roles in the series and then we can take a closer look at them all. Freddie Carter for Kez Brecker. Jesse May Lee as Alina Starkov, Archie Renault for Malian Oritsev, Amita Suman for Inej Gaffa, Kit Young plays Jesper Fahey, Ben Barnes as General Kirigan, 
Simon Sears as Ivan, Daniel Galligan as Nina Zenik, Daisy Head as Genya Safin, Sujaya Dasgupta as Zoya Najalensky, Kevin Eldon as The Opera, Dan Lee as Bo Yul Bayur, Deirdre Mullins as Tante Elaine, and Zoe Wanamaker as Bahra. So judging from how many episodes all of these characters are going to be playing in, the main characters are going to be Alina, Mel, General Kirigan, and then Jesper, Kaz, and Inej. There are also the six characters from the well-known promotional picture when the cast was first announced, and they are also the only characters that got their own promotional poster. Fan favorites Genya and Nina are only appearing in four episodes and Matthias actually doesn't appear until episode seven and only plays in episode seven. There's no mention of Wylan, so it appears that he's not gonna be there in the first season. So notably, the series never mentions the famous antagonist of the books, the Darkling. Instead, the role seems to be filled by a character named General Kirigan, and there is no General Kirigan in the book, so they took some liberty here. Also, in a video where the main cast first announced who they're going to play, they all say their own name and then the character that they're going to play, except for Ben Barnes, who plays General Kirigan. He just says hey, it's Ben Barnes, and then he doesn't say who he's gonna play. I don't know if I'm reading too much into this, but I just thought that was striking. A few days ago when we got the promotional posters, we can see with the little character bio that was written on them, they call General Kerrigan the Shadow Summoner, which is again not a word that appears in the books, but it seems... Oh, that's my cat, hello. <laughs> General Kirigan and a Shadow Summoner are not things that appear in the books, but it seems to me that they kind of went for a word that's more direct contrast with the other character, the Sun Summoner. So now they call General Kirigan the Shadow Summoner. So in not a single official promotional thing, the word Darkling is used, but Lee Bardugo and Ben Barnes themselves do refer to Ben Barnes's character as the Darkling. So my personal theory here is that I think in the series the character is not going to be introduced as the Darkling as it is in the books but instead they're going to introduce them as General Kerrigan but just you know for the fans of the books and <laughs> the actors do call him the Darkling just so the fans of the books know that that's him but they're just not doing it in like the official stuff I don't know it just it just strike me as odd that's all I want to say. Also, Lee Bardugo is going to have a little cameo in the series. We don't know where, of course, but we do know that she's going to be wearing a kefta. Next, we have the setting, the costumes, and some set photos that came out a few days ago. So the entire show is filmed in Budapest in Hungary. Since they only filmed in one place, I'm assuming that the entire show is going to take place in the Russian-inspired Ravka and that we don't get to see the Cater Dam of Six of Crows. Now let's look at the set photos, which are my favorite thing. Just, I, I love, I loved the set photos. <laughs> the first few photos seems to be clearly from the first episode because it seems to be the beginning of the story when they are still in the first army, Alina and Mel. We get a bit of a look at the costuming, which looks really good, by the way. A picture of Ben Barnes as General Kerrigan slash the Darkling. I think he's very well casted. Again, the vibe is just love it this is my favorite picture they put out it's from the six of crow cast we have jesper inej and kaz and kaz is wearing a little fedora it's so non-threatening but i still like it inej and her knife and then last but not least we have a picture of nina and matthias so this is probably a picture from episode seven since that's the only episode where matthias is in I think it looks great. I think the vibe is great. The costumes look great. Eric Heisner has also shared some details on the costuming on his Twitter. On the promotional picture of Kaz, he says, I happened upon our costuming department as the gloves were being made and asked Wendy Partridge, our designer, what she was stitching on the back. This pattern is called Crow Feather. Nice. And this is what he has to say about the promotional picture of the Darkling or General Kerrigan. There's so much iconography in the books, props and costuming endeavor to capture it all. Here you can see the eclipse symbol for the Darkling in the clasp. And then the last thing for the set is that there has been this leaked picture that is supposedly 
the ballroom scene, but I cannot confirm whether this is like real or not. Then for the show, they created an original Ravkin language. In the books, the language Ravkin is like loosely based on Russian, but Lee Bardugo never really like created an entire language, it's just a few words. But for the show, they did have someone create Fyrden, Ravkin and Kirch. And this is done by David G. Peterson, who we also know as the creator of Valyrian and Dothraki in Game of Thrones. And there's also going to be a little cameo of a Rafkin edition of the Shadow and Bone book in the series. And I think that's really cute. An important part of any show is, of course, the score, the music. And we did get a little bit of a sneak peek from the score of the show. It's composed by Joseph Trapanese, and I will leave a link in the description so you can listen to it for yourself, because obviously I would get a copyright strike if I showed it here, but I really like it. It's a very like dark and haunting, chilling tune with a lot of violence that I think it just, uh, it's perfect. Honestly, the moment I listened to it, I immediately just saw it. I could see it on the screen. Uh, all my dreams coming true. <laughs> and then last but not least, the teaser trailer. Although we don't have a trailer yet, we do have a small teaser trailer. Again, I will leave a link in the description if you haven't watched it yet. It's basically this slow graphic revealing a stag in a snowy forest. And then at the end, you can hear Ben Barnes say, you and I are going to change the world which is a line that the Darkling says in the books to Alina. And now all that rests us is awaiting the trailer. I can't wait for the trailer. I just really, really, really hope it's gonna be good. The last time I watched a Netflix trailer, it was for Wings the Fate Saga or Fate the Wing Saga, and I was utterly disappointed. So I really hope that Netflix does not disappoint me on this one. <laughs> Judging from how often they share stuff from the show, I think we're gonna get a trailer like towards the end of March, about a month before the show comes out on Netflix. I plan on making more videos about Shadow and Bone and the Grishaverse when we are waiting for the show. Like I want to reread the Shadow and Bone books and do a little deep dive into that. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Also, you can follow me on my social media if you want to hear me scream about Shadow and Bone and also many, many other books. Please let me know in the comments if you have any theories on the show because I honestly, I think I can, maybe I should make like a little theory video for what I think the show is going to be about because we know that it's going to be different from the books. Anyway, just let me know what you think of that. Let me know what you think of the series. Are you excited? I definitely am. And I really hope I will see you soon with another video. Goodbye.